Hello and welcome back. Well, it's just gone 7 a.m. and today I am making a two hour journey north with a car full of gear to a venue and a theater that I've worked with for many years. Today is the get-in day, a get-in day of my first major production since the closure of theatres here in the UK due to COVID-19. The get-in day for me in this particular production is going to involve getting the band together for the first time, um, a technical rehearsal this evening and then tomorrow a dress rehearsal. Now, as the rest of the company will be getting very excited to hear the band for the first time, it's one day when the MD can get quite stressed. One of the first decisions I make when taking on any particular um, music director role is to decide how the music is going to be reproduced. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, I think long gone are the days when I would pick up a baton and conduct a group of musicians. A lot of today's musicals involve tracks and I've done lots of videos on tracks, backing tracks, click tracks and all the various gear that you need to put that together. This particular production that I'm talking about um, is going to be a series of music from everything from Irving Berlin to Queen, from Blues Brothers to Andrew Lloyd Webber. So quite a varied mix and I decided right at the onset that it was going to be a mixture of uh, tracks and band playing in sync together. In many videos I've talked about tracks, backing tracks, click tracks and I thought in this video it would be useful to see how all the elements and the equipment fits together in a real theatre live setting with the band. So stand by for quite a stressful day. So then we've finally got set up and one of the most time consuming bits of any get in and set up is not only putting the instruments in place, but it's how they all connect together, particularly we that play keyboards and when using tracks as I am doing in this instance. Now one thing to point out first of all is that we've got a sound check going off at the moment, they're doing some work on the sound so might get interrupted while I'm recording this but we'll, we'll have a go anyway. So, um, one thing to point out to start with is that I'm not using any MIDI in this, so there's no main stage or anything like that. To be, honest, to be honest, I think I've said before, I'm a little bit unsure when it comes to MIDI. I'm not totally, I'm, it's great, don't get me wrong, it's absolutely fantastic and the way it works. And some geniuses that put it together all those years ago. But I just feel more comfortable if MIDI isn't involved at all. So, I have here actually running two completely separate systems. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, um, I have um, my, as my main keyboard my Roland RD800. Um, and all the internal, well not all the internal sounds, but the sounds from this is what I'm using from a, a live point of view. Um, so any live playing that I'm doing, it is all coming from here. And that will then go into the mixer, which I'll show shortly. Then independently of that, but also going into the mixer, is anything that comes from QLab. Um, here in QLab you can see we've got We've got most things queued up. All I need to do is hit the space bar and away we go. And what comes out of QLab there um, is USB. And that USB goes into the USB at the back of my very trusty Focusrite Scarlett 4i4. There's the USB going in. Output from the Scarlet, therefore, then goes to my small mixer, uh, which again is Behringer. 
and there is the left and the right panned left and right to give the stereo image for the tracks. Then independently of that I've gone and gone for a stereo, stereo output from the Roland RD800 and those are the two inputs there again panned left and right for the RD800 on channels 3 and 4 in this instance. This way I can mix the level of piano, which is basically the sounds that I'm using in this production, um, to what's on the track. I think I know it better than anyone else, therefore I can do my own mix. And so therefore what comes to the desk is that master out there. Um, and from a monitoring point of view, they will then send me my mix. And I use this very small uh, sub-zero uh, personal mixer and I can mix that to taste accordingly. But what about the click? Well the click doesn't go through that mixer at all. All I've, all I've put into that mixer is what's going to go front of house. The click will come directly out of the Focusrite 4i4 on a third channel and will go then directly to the input of my... there it is to the input of the my Behringer Powerplay Pro 8, which is an eight channel, which will take up to um, 16 outputs, actually, specific headphone amplifier. And there I've got four players in the band, including myself, outputs one, two, three, and four, ready used there. Any other equipment that you see hanging around here is all related to what goes to front of house. And, uh, in this and in this particular venue, they've given me, um, and in this particular venue, they've given me the opportunity to be able to level, um, or give levels to either what I'd want to hear or what the band wants to hear. That's the setup. This is how it all clicks to, uh, works together. One thing of no, however, Give always, always give your sound operator time. You can spend weeks and weeks, not if not months, putting your singers through their routines, getting the sound that you want. You can do your band arrangements, um, but it's all really then in the hands of the front of house sound engineer. Um, unfortunately, there never is enough time and technical rehearsals, which we had yesterday, was quite problematic. I hope that's of some use. See you next time.